Hello, this is Billy from Insanity Samples, and today we are taking an in-depth look around our new flagship solo woodwind library, Neo Woodwinds Modern Soloists. Neo Woodwinds is a library collection of world-class woodwind principal musicians, with decades of credits both on stage and on screen through film scoring sessions, playing as principal chairs for the UK's top orchestras. This collection really is the cream of the crop, and we've poured our heart and souls into bringing this collection to life within the software world. Along with meticulously captured bread and butter articulations, there is an assortment of unusual and cutting edge performance techniques on offer that really set this collection apart from the crowd. From spellbinding true legatos that shine, to cutting edge techniques such as tongue rams and plosive percussive textures. Let's start with the instrument with the most articulations on offer, the flute, and run through that instrument first. A quick look at the interface will show a similar layout to the first in the Neo Soloists series, Neo Strings, in that the articulations are listed on the left here with correlating key switch references. In addition to this, we also have overlays. Overlays are a great way to introduce more flexibility into your performance by overlaying another articulation on the fly when playing over 100 in velocity on your keyboard. The overlays range from instrument to instrument in this collection, but comprise generally of staccatissimo overlays, trills, and ornaments. Let's take a listen to the initial load up setup that the flute loads into on startup. This has been designed to be the 99% of the time setup you should use for best performance and most straightforward creativity inducing playability within Neo Woodwinds. In essence, the expressive vib longs in conjunction with legato and staccatissimo overlay. With this combo, most melodic and ensemble writing can be taken care of in a very fluid and natural way. It just bleeds personality in this environment and really takes you there right out of the box with this articulation combination. So you'll notice the legato toggle switch is engaged. I'd advise keeping that on permanently given woodwind instruments can only ever be played one note at a time in real life. However, if you want to sketch an idea or write quick harmonies, then turning this off will allow the long articulations to become polyphonic, meaning you can now play chords. When you switch the legato switch off or on, the blue tick disappears and reappears. This signifies which articulations will become monophonic and make use of the adaptive true legato we have in the instrument, with all others remaining polyphonic without the need to switch off the legato toggle. Additionally, when the legato switch is on, we have made extensive use of it across most articulations that aren't too short to function properly. As a result, we have many possible ways to build and play fast lines within the legato setting. For example, using the Mercato setting, which is a short note, but a relatively lengthy short note, with legato mode on, we get a fantastic way to create runs or fast lines that feel very human in performance and add an extra layer of realism to the performance style. As you can hear, there's something so natural and nuanced about the sound of a harsh attack from a Mercato articulation in conjunction with that true legato working hard behind the scenes that really helps to create that live player performance sound. Another useful articulation that you may not initially associate with playing runs or lines is the trills articulation in legato mode. If we are playing fast runs, then the samples will never reach the second note of the trill and instead serve as an interesting sounding short note variation, which again is a great way to create fast runs that sound authentically live in a way that's hard to explain. Let's take a listen.
Okay, let's take a listen to some of the other articulations. Very cool. Okay, on to the runs. Here we have a collection of live performances of major scale runs. We have three options that are accessed either via the buttons next to the articulation or via the key switches that will appear when you choose this articulation in green. We have up and down runs, just up runs and just down runs. beautiful way to inject some authentic human quality into your work. Okay, on to the flutter tongues. This is an aggressive playing style where the musician rolls their tongue behind their breath as they play, generating a fast repetition of the notes that give an almost propeller-like texture. An awesome effect to have in the wings, and one that cannot be recreated without having the actual samples of that sound. Now some more standard ornamental playing, these can all be used as overlays too. On to a really fun part of the instrument the plosive percussive sounds, where the musician basically says P as they play, creating that almost beatbox style sound that is very unique. We have short and long takes on this. Very cool. Okay, finally for the flute we have sing and play, where the musician sung the note in unison with the flute whilst playing. A very eerie and unique texture indeed. In the upper octave, the singer then breaks away and sings an octave below. This was all recorded live and not separately, so you get a really interesting mingling of textures and frequencies here, especially in the sing and play woozy articulation, where the singer sings a very slow and wide vibrato around the core note. Awesome, and just so unique. We're fairly certain this is the only library that has that sort of texture on offer. It's so strange and beautiful. Just before we leave this instrument, let's take a look at the other elements of the interface that are global to all the other instruments. So we have the mic mix and pan section, where we can get our desired mix or purge entire mic positions to save RAM. Then we have an effect section with a simple delay and reverb. Then our dynamic slider section with expression and dynamics. Expression is the only global control here for all articulations, with the dynamics working on the first three articulations, molding the sound to give softer or harsher tones depending on how low or high the slider is. Finally, the legato section, where we can choose how our legato interacts with our playing. If we set to one of the adaptive modes, it will change on the fly based on your performance in real time. 
if you set it to speed and you play slower than 0.5 of a second, you will get a more pronounced and lyrical transition. But if you play faster than half a second per note, like in runs or quick melodic phrases, you will get a subdued and fast transition. The same is true for velocity in the second mode. But now if you play above 100 in velocity, you will get the fast transition. And if you play below 100, you will get the slow transition. You can then fix this to either fast or slow by using position three or four on this control. We then have legato volume. This drags up or down the volume of the transition itself between notes. The key sound volume deals with mechanical sounds of the instrument. A vital component to really making this instrument sound real and authentic is dialing this into taste, as you will get the actual sounds of the keys being pressed on the instrument that were recorded in isolation to be overlaid here. Balancing these things just right between the legato, key sounds and actual sample sets will really set this instrument into motion. Okay, let's take a listen to the other instruments and we'll just play through the articulations and not talk very much as there is a lot to get through. Bassoon first. unique and interesting textures, we have a handful of multiphonics performed live, where the player creates more than one note at a time by overblowing the reed and over pinching, a crazy alarm-like texture. That's a lot of fun, that one. Okay, tongue rams. This is where the reed is removed and the tongue is used to force air through the instrument and create a note. Again, a very unique and fringe case texture, but so cool. Awesome, okay, on to clarinet.
before we leave the runs on the clarinet, I wanted to show you a bit of an Easter egg that we planted in this library. It's a couple of samples of a performance style that just couldn't be recreated with samples in any other way other than recording the full technique. It's a super glissando of sorts, and it's unique to the clarinet really. Most definitely made famous by its use in Rhapsody in Blue, we have recorded a nod of the cap to that opening glissando by recording both a full gliss with opening trill, which of course doesn't have much of a use case outside of that piece. So we also recorded just the glissando element, which of course is far more useful. It's just a bit of fun that we had with the player on the day, and I'm so glad we did because it sounds great. Both have a root note of B flat, but are placed on the B natural and C above the B flat as a special use case, so they are easily accessible. Highlighted in purple here, let's take a listen. And now just the glissando element. Okay, now just for fun, the actual full opening phrase, using the trill and then changing to marcato with true legato, and then expressive longs with true legato to finish the phrase off. Let's take a listen. Okay, that was our minor indulgence there and uh, nodding of the cap. Let's move on with the show. Some lovely textures in there. Okay, on to the final instrument, the piccolo. Now the more unusual textures. We have plosives, which are short and aggressive plosive sounds used to create airflow. Very cool. Okay, now tongue rams. Another strange and unique little sound, so unique to this particular collection. Finally, we have whistle tones. This is, as it sounds, pitches created as a delicate whistle-like airflow creating extreme harmonics and interesting textures. These are played as random birdsong-like chaos, which we have then pitch-stretched to allow for a full octave of strangeness.
Okay, that has been an in-depth look at Neo Woodwinds, a very unique outlier in the woodwind world, great for creating conventional woodwind parts, whilst also being able to take you to a strange sonic place all in one setting. Enjoy the library and thanks for watching.